Now, the cockpit door. Uh, we found today that the cockpit door is designed to open during rapid decompression. It is designed to open during rapid decompression. However, no one among the flight crew knew that. They were not informed. Uh, so Boeing uh, is going to make some changes to the manual, which then hopefully will translate into uh, procedures and information for the flight attendants and for the uh, uh, crew uh, in the um, cockpit. First, I'm going to uh, provide a, a summary of the event from the flight data recorder. At 17.06 and 47 seconds Pacific Standard Time, the aircraft departed runway 28 left at Portland International Airport. At 17.12 and 33 seconds, the recorded cabin pressure dropped from 14.09 to 11.64 pounds per square inch when the aircraft was at approximately 14,830 feet and 271 knots. The cabin altitude greater than 10,000 feet warning activated. At 17.12 and 34 seconds, the master caution activated. The cabin pressure dropped to 9.08 PSI at approximately 14,850 feet and 271 knots. At 17.12 and 52 seconds, the master caution deactivated. At 17.13 and 41 seconds, the aircraft continued to climb and reached a maximum altitude of 16,320 feet and began to descend. The airspeed was 276 knots. At 1713 and 56 seconds, the selected altitude changed from 23,000 feet to 10,000 feet. At 1714 and 35 seconds, the master caution activated for three seconds. At 1716 and 56 seconds, the aircraft began a left turn from 121 degrees. The altitude was approximately 10,120 feet. At 1717, the aircraft descended below 10,000 feet. At 1718 and five seconds, the aircraft altitude was approximately 9,050 feet, and the airspeed was 271 knots. The cabin altitude greater than 10,000 feet warning deactivated. The cabin pressure was 10.48 PSI. At 1726 and 46 seconds, the aircraft landed on runway 28 left at Portland International Airport. Now, the survival factors team interviewed uh, the remaining two flight attendants, one from the aft of, aft of the aircraft and one for, from forward. Uh, their interview and discussion was consistent uh, with the interviews of the other two flight attendants. Uh, they also reported pretty significant crew communications challenges during the event. They didn't know what was occurring. Uh, they uh, were certainly concerned, uh, they stated, about the four unac unaccompanied minors, and their focus was on them and the three lap children at the time. Uh, the two flight attendants in the aft outboard seats in the aft galley had difficulty seeing what was going on uh, in the cabin and in the aisle. It's very difficult from that location to see anything. There is a very, very small mirror provided to look down the aisle. It's not sufficient. So it's very difficult for them to see. 
They, uh, the flight attendants mentioned uh, that the uh, communications was so poor that they felt like they, they really needed guidance and information, uh, and it was, it was a pretty terrifying event. Now, um, with that said, uh, I know that a lot of media is reaching out to the flight attendants. The, the interviews have been very emotional. This was a really significant event with zero information at the time. There's a lot of trauma that they are working through. It's going to be a long process. It was terrifying. I would ask, the NTSB is asking, please give them that time. They are working with peer-to-peer counselors, um, and, and they just need that time to heal, and they have asked us to mention that uh, in this media briefing, and I would really ask that you respect their wishes and give them that time to really begin to process uh, what they experienced. Now, the cockpit door. Uh, we found today that the cockpit door is designed to open during rapid decompression. It is designed to open during rapid decompression. However, no one among the flight crew knew that. They were not informed. Uh, so Boeing uh, is going to make some changes to the manual, which then hopefully will translate into uh, procedures and information for the flight attendants and for the uh, uh, crew uh, in the um, cockpit. As far as the oxygen mask, that we weren't sure if it deployed uh, or if it was stuck, uh, it did deploy. Uh, we interviewed the passengers in that uh, row, and uh, they had put uh, the, the oxygen mass butt back up in the panel, which was the other thing we suspected, um, but it did deploy and was working. Now on to systems. Our systems group uh, focused on the cabin pressure control system on the aircraft. This is the auto pressurization light that illuminated that I, that we have gotten a lot of questions on. This system is designed as a triple redundant system with one primary cabin pressure controller. It's a computer system. There is a secondary cabin pressure controller. A secondary, that's a secondary computer system. And then there's a manual controller. So there are, uh, it's a triple redundant system. That means that if the primary controller fails, the flight crew switches to the secondary controller. If that fails, they can switch to manual. Any one of these systems is fully capable of maintaining safe cabin pressurization. In fact, if either one of the computer systems is inoperative, the FAA allows the operator to continue flying the aircraft. We have verified from the maintenance logs that the redundant system operated as designed on December 7th, January 3rd, and January 4th, going into the alt mode, not needing to go into the manual mode. At this time, we have no indications whatsoever that this correlated in any way to the expulsion of the door plug and the rapid decompression. Now, the NTSB is very thorough, so we will uh, go back and look at the flight data recorder, and we will get data on cabin pressure, and we're also going to download the memory on the cabin pressure controllers. We may have to pull the units to see why it was acting up, um, but a Boeing, we have asked Boeing uh, for a specialist uh, to arrive tomorrow to work through, uh, through this so we can uh, just go through the rest of it. But again, no indication of any correlation between the two. With respect to the ETOPS restriction, Alaska Airlines reported to the NTSB 
that their internal policy is to restrict aircraft with multiple maintenance, maintenance write-ups for certain aircraft systems from flying ETOPS flights for a period of time. That's not required by the regulation. That is an extra step that Alaska Airlines put in place. Now, ETOPS stands for Extended Twin Engine Operations. What that means is that ETOPS allow, uh, permits twin engine air, airplanes to operate over a route that contains a point further than three hours flying time, three hours for this aircraft, from the nearest airport. And the restriction was put in place per Alaska as an extra step to ensure safety and to allow them to conduct maintenance. As for the structures, we, um, I want to start by thanking Bob, who all of the media successfully outed. Um, but Bob apparently was a star with all his students today. Um, I, I, I really want to thank uh, the community overall. I, I can't thank you enough. Every time the NTSB asks for help, every single time the community pulls through, and I, I just want to say thank you to everyone. I especially want to say thank you to Bob. I'm sure he was a hit at school today, um, so that's very exciting. Uh, we did go out at 7 a.m. this morning to retrieve uh, the door plug. Um, we are still looking for the bottom hinge fitting and a spring. It's a pretty large spring. Uh, the, the fitting is a green circular piece with a hole in it. Uh, it's not key to the investigation. This is not something that's key to us determining any, anything or ruling out anything. We're just fine. But it's always nice to have some of the pieces if you find it. And uh, if anyone does, please call um, uh, NTSB. Please email us at witness at NTSB.gov or contact local law enforcement. Again, I want to thank local law enforcement and the FBI for helping us also look uh, uh, throughout uh, the early stages of our investigation. Uh, I will mention that community members also uh, found today uh, a plastic window frame and a headset and uh, uh, headrest, excuse me, a headrest, and uh, turned that into... Uh, the NTSB. So we really appreciate that. Uh, thank you. Now our structures team um, examined the right door plug. Uh, so the door plug on the left is what expelled uh, the aircraft. They examined the right door plug in its installed position today and found no discrepancies. Everything was in place. Now, again, they examined it in the installed position. At some point, they may look at it in the position where you would conduct maintenance, which is a fi uh, 15 degrees down. That's still to come. Now, tomorrow we also plan to do a 3D scan of the left opening and match it up to models and drawings to ensure that we're not missing anything. Uh, we're also going to send components and the door plug back to our lab in D.C. for further examination. Uh, the question was on what came of the interviews of the pilots. Uh, so for the, um, pi uh, the captain and the first officer, uh, they um, described a very loud environment chaotic. Uh, at the time, they heard a bang uh, and then some air, uh, some pressure changes in their ears. Uh, they mentioned uh, that the door uh, had flown open at the same time. A flight attendant had, try, had attempted to close it a few times, uh, eventually succeeded in that. The um, uh, one of their, their checklists, their laminated checklist, flew out the door uh, when the door also opened. They described it as very loud, windy at the time, uh, and they had trouble communicating. Uh, they had trouble hearing each other. They had trouble hearing air traffic control. 
uh, and they had trouble communicating throughout the event. Uh, I will say, once again, excellent job by uh, the entire flight crew, those in the cockpit and those in the cabin, uh, and also air traffic control.